Divine Truth Documentary Jesus, Mary and Others provide information to people or organizations that produce documentaries. In this video, Thomas Leder interviews Jesus at his home. This is session 4, filmed on the 13th of August 2013 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Um, could you explain to me about your first century existence and um, tell me who you are? Right, well, perhaps I'll reverse those questions for you. <laughs> Firstly, I'm Alan John Miller, like I was born in this life, Alan John Miller, but, but I actually have had a 2000 year life and, and my name is Jesus as well. So I, I was born Jesus of Nazareth in the first century with my, my parents were Mary and Joseph. But uh, since then, we've had, I've had life in the first century. I then entered the spirit world, obviously at my death, and then lived for nearly 2000 years in the spirit world and then returned back to earth in this life as Alan John Miller. So can you describe to me why you believe that you are Jesus of Nazareth? Well, I don't believe I'm Jesus of Nazareth. I, I know I'm Jesus of Naz Nazareth. Um, I suppose it's the same way in which you know that you're Thomas Leader, and that is that you've had a life experience that you remember, and all of that period of time, you've interacted with different people, you've grown up, and you had you know life experience as a child growing up, and then as you grew, you know different people came into your life, and they will remember you, and and now you're a, a grown man. Um, is it 31 or 32 years of age? I don't know. <laughs> 32, 33, and. For me, it's the same kind of thing, with the exception that I remember my life of 2,000 years rather than just the 50 years that I am right now. So, so I remember my life in the first century, shortly after I was born, around two years of age onwards, I remember pretty clearly most of the events that occurred in my life in the first century. I remember a lot of the events that occurred in the spirit world through my 2,000 years of life. I don't remember all of them yet because I still got some fear associated with remembering some of them. But, uh, and I also, of course, remember my life in terms of returning back to Earth, how that felt and, and the experience of that, and also then having this life. So, so it's all to me one life. It's not, uh, it's not like I believe I was somebody else. Uh, I know who I am and I know how you know, old I am and, and so forth. And I remember all of those events throughout my life the same way as a person would normally remember their life. Yeah. So, um, okay. Mm -hmm. um, the fly put me off. Um. <laughs> <laughs> why now? Why, why did you choose to come back now? Well, a lot of that is about uh, what we could... It wasn't so much choosing to come back now, it was just us getting ready to get into the position where we could come back. So there was a, there's a whole lot of God's laws that govern the universe and the, the laws that govern the ability of a person to return to Earth are quite complex in their nature and it took me nearly 2,000 years to discover all of them. And as a result of that, it took myself and Mary to the point of becoming at one with each other as well as at one with God. And through that process, uh, we started to discover the, the method by which we could return if we wanted to. And uh, once we discovered the method that we could return, which we discovered in around 1935 of our time, you know, if you count human time, human history from the point of view of the earth, around that time in the spirit world, we discovered how to return. And then it was a matter of planning what we might do when we do return and so forth. And so we decided that it would be better that more than one couple returns. And, uh, and so we waited for some other couples in the spirit world to get into the same condition that we had gotten into in order to return. And when around seven of those couples have got, got into the correct condition, there were seven couples who wanted to return. And, uh, and so what we did was we waited for the seventh couple to get into the condition where they could return. And then we began the process of returning. And so that process began in 1962. Um, so it was really a process of discovering the laws that govern how a person could return to Earth. And then it was a matter of, of making arrangements, basically, for our return, which took some years because we were waiting for other people to be involved in the process. Okay. 
Did you want to punch in at all? Or? Should I? Yeah, but, yeah. Um, sorry, I'm just concerned about time. No, no, sir. Um, I reckon relax about the time, okay, okay. and just just ask some of the questions you want to ask while we're here. And because can I also? Sorry, yeah. But I don't know whether or not this question is actually whether or not you can answer it in uh, less than four hours. Um, <laughs> so, because uh, you mentioned the how, mm -hmm. so can you describe to me actually how that is possible? Certainly, I can give a very brief summary. Obviously, there are four, I've given four-hour talks about the whole summary of how it happens. But, but basically, um, when you first come to Earth you are really one half of a complete soul. So God makes a soul, and then in order for the soul to obtain an experience of, of itself, an experience of its life, and in order, to, order to, for itself to discover itself and its own personality, it has to incarnate. And in the process of incarnation, the soul splits in half, and half of the soul incarnates first, and, then, and the way it incarnates is by attaching to the two bodies that are created for it at conception. So at conception, there are two bodies created, not just a physical body, but there's a physical body and a spirit body. And then the two bodies are connected, the soul is connected to those two bodies. And in fact, if a soul doesn't connect to those two bodies, then the cell itself that starts the replication process just dies naturally. It won't survive without a soul connecting to it, both of the bodies. So the soul, the half of the soul, connects to the body and then the other half of the soul waits uh, to go through the same process and usually that occurs within the first 20 years of the first soul's life. So the two souls are now on earth um, and assuming there's nothing untoward that occurs like an abortion or a miscarriage or some kind of childhood death or something like that, then both of them would probably grow up on, uh, on earth. and. And, uh, and then get to a point where th things happen and eventually perhaps they die or from accidents or sickness or ill health or maybe from old age and then, and then they uh, enter the spirit world in their spirit body only because their physical body is just left on earth and eventually decays but their soul is still connected to their spirit body and then they can continue to progress and when I talk about progress I'm more, always talking about progression in love so so from, from a, as a brief summary in terms of what happened to myself and Mary, basically we incarnated in the first century. I incarnated around five years before Mary incarnated in the first century. And, and I eventually grew up and Mary grew up and eventually we met each other. And by this stage I was already at one with God myself. So I'd already gone through a process with God where I'd become at one with God and growing in love towards, towards that goal. And as a result of that, Mary started to progress in love towards that goal and then I got killed and then Mary died 30 or, 40, 30 so or so years later. We met up in the spirit world, we continued to progress in love and each time we progressed in love, we progressed towards each other. And as we slowly progressed towards each other, we eventually hit the state where we made the transition into what's called a soul union. So the soul, which was now, was previously the two halves, working in almost independently at the beginning, and then slowly coming together, eventually join and become one again. And at that process, you have the ability to return. Now that took us nearly 2,000 years of our life to get to that point where we became a unified soul, single soul again. And once we became a unified single soul, we had the ability to connect to another two bodies on Earth and, and, and therefore make an appearance back on Earth, I suppose you could say. And that's how, as a general, very quick summary of, of the entire process. Obviously, there's a lot more detail that we'd probably want to go into at some point if the person really wanted to understand that process properly. Thank you. You're okay. 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 Basically. Okay. This, again. So. Ah, 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 ah. There's our crows. It's a it's a unique it's a unique sound of the Australian bush. <laughs> it's all over Australia. They are crows. We so, have crows, but they don't make that noise. No, they sort of have a lazy laugh, don't they? It's like ah 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 ah. It's like they making fun of you while they're doing it. <laughs> yes. Um. 
So, again, it's a massive question. What's the meaning of life? Well, the primary meaning of life, it's actually a very simple question, believe it or not. I suppose mankind has made a meal of it in terms of finding the meaning of life. But basically, the reason why God created us was so that God could share her love to us and give her love to us. And therefore, we have the ability to experience the love of God. So that's the primary reason why God created us. And then as a result of that primary reason, there is a secondary reason, and that is so that we could experience ourselves. So, so the, the two primary reasons why God created us was firstly, so that we could experience what it felt like to receive God's love and eventually become at one with God in love. And then the second primary reason for our existence is so that we could experience ourselves and experience growth, potentially infinite growth but that depends on whether we receive love from God or not. So we have the ability to have limited growth if, if we do not receive God's love, but we have the ability to have infinite growth if we receive God's love and become more and more like God as we progress towards God. So they are the two primary reasons. Now inside of all of that, there is this third factor, and that is we get to experience life. and. As far as life goes, we don't know, nobody knows, in fact, how far we could potentially progress. Because if, if we can potentially progress infinitely, we can't really guess what that's going to result in. So, so a large part of our experience is going to be the, the time getting there, the, the enjoyment of the time getting there. Now, God also placed in this whole system a feedback system, and that feedback system basically is that if we decide to choose to be unloving, then our growth becomes limited. And also our experience, potentially, depending on what laws of God we break, becomes painful. If we choose to bring our life into more harmony with God's love, then our experience becomes more pleasurable and also more powerful. And, and potentially, as I've said, uh, the ability to grow infinitely. So this was the underlying reason why God created us, so God could share her love with us, and, and we have that experience of also being able to eventually grow to potentially being able to share our love, firstly with other people and other people on earth and, and our soulmates and, and our children and those kind of things, but eventually who knows what the potential is. We may at some point in the future become more and more like God in that we create souls and have the ability to know how to create universes. There's no, if, if there's infinite growth, we don't really know, and that's the fascinating, fascinating part, we don't really know how far the infinite growth will extend, and so who knows what potentially we can grow into through this process. And what I've seen from my personal relationship with God is that the potential for growth is so immense that I have almost given up trying to predict how far it may go. I have ideas even now of how far it may proceed, but, I, but which I have not yet experienced. But uh, I suspect that my limited conceptions of how far it goes are much more limited than God's conception of how far he, uh, God has designed us to grow. So I feel we have this beautiful potential life but we have a limited life if we don't learn about love so and this is the way god's created the universe too if we choose through the exercise of our will to not learn about love then uh, of course our growth will be limited and i suppose you could say that's the fourth thing that we need to understand about this whole process and that is god has placed us here so that we learn about the effects of exercising our will when we exercise our will in harmony with love, then, then we have this potential for infinite growth and for infinite beauty, infinite, infinite uh, pleasure and, and also knowledge in the end. If we choose to exercise our will out of harmony with love, then there are all the laws of God that we're working against in the universe and that of course then creates a very finite, limited and often stagnant existence, which is the kind of existence the average person on the earth generally experiences. And uh, 
And if we understood this relationship, then we would understand that we are actually, in many cases, creating our own limitations through, through this desire to live apart from or separate to God. Yeah. But that's basically a sort of very short summary of what I, how I feel and how I see and, and what I see is the reasons why God created us. And in particular, the beauty of sharing God's love is something that most people initially have little sort of idea about. But as you start to grow in this relationship, and particularly once you've entered the spirit world after you've left the life here on earth, generally most people grow in the relationship far more then you get to experience such a, an amazing universe that, that your conceptions of it now, you, you look, when you look back, the conceptions of what you had of it at the time, you know, when you're on earth, and, and this applied to me in the first century too, the conception I had of it even when I was in the first century at one with God, compared to what I've experienced since. Uh, so It's so different to what I could even expect that I've given up having expectations about it and just gone along with this ride that God's taken me on in order to experience the universe and experience myself and experience the other half of myself, my soul man, and also experience the ability of and, and pleasures of creation when you're using your will in harmony with God's love. So it's an, it's an amazing process that I feel the majority of people could engage on earth, and if they did engage it on earth, they would find not only would their happiness on earth be much greater I than don't it currently there's is, anything but also their the experience in the spirit world would be far part, more rapid you know, in terms hope. of the progression through the different layers, I suppose you could call it the spirit world. We call them dimensions or spheres. And as a person grows through that, they start realizing that the potential is never ending, it's infinite. And, if, and so in the end, you, you start realizing you can't even guess in the end what the what what the original concept that God had for us was because it's only by growing towards God more and more that we gain more and more of an idea of that original concept but certainly we know for certain that the main reason why God created us was so that she could share her love with us and then we therefore experience the infinite growth that comes from the sharing of that love mm. thank you one more I do one more because um, when you talk about God, you say she. Or he. Or he. Mm -hmm. So have you ever met God? No one has actually physically met God. And I'm not sure whether... And, and I suppose it depends on what you view as meeting God. You see, if you view meeting God as feeling this intense relationship with God and actually having this emotional exchange with God constantly, then certainly I've met God. If you view meeting God as having a sort of face-to-face -face chat with a person who isn't the entity of God, then I don't actually believe that that is possible until we make future transitions that maybe God has planned. Because the way I see God is that God exists outside of the current concept of the universe. And because logically, from a logical concept, God existed before the universe was created, it therefore makes sense that God can't be inside of the universe itself. God has to be outside of the universe itself. And because of this concept of God that I have, that God is outside of the universe, um, the only way for me eventually to meet God and have a face-to-face -face chat uh, in the way that most people on earth would conceive it would be to actually exit the universe somehow. And given the fact that at the moment my very existence depends upon the universe that God has created, um, I'm not sure how that transition is ever going to happen where we no longer are dependent upon the universe that God's created and actually can exit the universe and therefore be where God is. And I believe in the end that possibly is the very most you know, severe extent of the infinite growth that is possible. But, uh, but nobody knows for certain because nobody's experienced it. And uh, I feel that experience is going to be far, far distant in the future with far many more transitions besides becoming at one with God in love. I think there'll be at one with God in wisdom, at one with God in knowledge, at one with God in many other characteristics of God before that kind of meeting would be possible. 
But until that meeting is possible, you can become at one with God in love. And that is a constant exchange of love between yourself and God. And from that point of view, you feel the character and nature of God. It's like having a conversation with a person based on feelings constantly. And, uh, and that certainly is possible. That, that's how I became in the first century on earth. And, and we're all those 2,000 years of time in my spirit world life. And that's how myself and Mary came when we were, we, we st remained when we were at one with each other as well as one with God. And I believe uh, that is possible for every single person on this planet to become into the same condition. And when they come into the same condition, they'll have a very good idea of the nature and personality of God and they'll feel God's love into them. They'll feel it transforming them. They'll have a deep knowledge and respect for all of the things God's created as well but they won't know everything and I feel actually that it's going to be impossible for us to know everything and so I don't feel it's a major problem not knowing everything and most people expect me as Jesus to know everything but I feel it's actually physically and logically impossible for me to know everything unless I'm God and I'm certainly not God and I know a lot of religions claim that I am but I, I know that I'm not God and I know that I'll be infinitely progressing and even after that I still won't be God I'll still have a person who created me, a person who created my soul, a person who created the laws under which I am governed. However, as to what the end result of my progression will be, if there is such a thing as an end result, I do not know and cannot even postulate about those particular things. We can only guess. And, uh, and in fact, I can live another 2,000 years and still probably only guess as to what that potential will be. Yeah. Excellent.